brought some props. I'll show you in a bit. So my story is about making things out of wood. Um, I grew up in a household where on the weekends we made things, we took things apart, put them back together, and we did a lot of woodwork. And I have fond memories of that. And, but something happened around high school. Time was precious. I did other things. And I didn't do any more woodworking until about 2005. And that's when my wife and I bought a graystone that we wanted to renovate. And I thought, you know, should go buy a few power tools, maybe do a little of the renovation ourselves. And then after 12 years, this is where I'm at. <laughs> Um, so this shop is 12 foot by 14 foot. I have, you know, Kevin Murphy has 10 times the size, but every square foot has some purpose. It was designed to make furniture. On the left side, you can see some of the furniture I've made that's in the shop. But the problem with making furniture is it's very time intensive. And so over, in the last few years at least, I found less and less time. So that drew me to the back of the shop, and especially right here, and that's the wood lathe. So what's a wood lathe? It's a machine that turns around whatever you stick on. It's like a block of wood. And then you take something like, in this case, a gouge, it's sharp, and you stick it into the wood at just the right angle with just the right arc, and you can carve a bowl. It's literally coming down onto the blade and carving out an object. So it's really fun. It's, I, it's uh, very relaxing, I find, and it's very challenging. And the other thing is it's very manageable in terms of time. You can go down to the shop on Saturday afternoon, say I'm going to make a salad bowl, and it might very well be at 5 o'clock at night you come up to dinner with a salad bowl. A lot of times you come up with nothing, or you come up with something completely different because the salad bowl didn't quite work out. But that's the thrill of the whole exercise. So what I wanted to do was first, because I think nobody here has ever seen a wood turning apparatus spin around, I made a short video with my daughter, shot a short video of me over the weekend, and I just want to show you how you put together a bowl. So here's first some stills. First you get a block of wood, okay? Um, that's Clara Walnut from a walnut orchard where they took down a tree that wasn't producing. Draw a circle on it, you put a little attachment to it, and then you stick it on the lathe. Now the lathe, when you turn it on, goes about 2,000 RPM. So it's just spinning around. You can just see a blur. And that's when you kind of muster up the courage to start sticking the steel into the wood. Um, but it's exciting. And to show you what it looks like, here's a picture of this past weekend. Let's see if I can get this to work. Um, so just click. Yeah. So this is an old piece I had laying around the shop that I'm just truing up here on the side. You'll notice there's lots of shavings. There's a very fluid motion in the, in the work. Now I'm cleaning out the inside, and again, lots of shavings. Um, it's a lot of fun. You know, here's more shavings, they're everywhere. <laughs> I have a big smile on my face, which isn't in the shot, but um, you know, that's, that's, part, that's mostly the process. So, the, so what attracted me to it, it's a short project, the process is fun, and then I really got hooked, um, and I started really getting into the wood itself. Because wood is a really complex and beautiful material. And it's something that you have to adapt to. Things can go terribly wrong. And then you have to put together what you've got, leverage it up, and make something else out of it. So let me show you a couple of things. This is my props. So the first one is this is what I wanted it to be the one that I was working on this weekend. But it's a different one. Um, that one didn't turn out. Um, but this is what I would consider to be a good bowl. It's too small. But it's good because the form is nice. And if you hold it in your hands, the shape is just so that you want to kind of pull it in. It's very you know, welcoming. And it's beautiful in the sense that there's a little spot right here with some ribbon curly figure, and it's showcased. So to me, this is like a great bowl, and I'd be very happy to make this. I'm going to leave these out laying around, so you should pick them up and feel them and really get a sense for it, because then you, you start to see why I'm in love with the wood. But sometimes things go wrong. So here's another one. This was a salad bowl. It was supposed to be a salad bowl. It was big, and there's a big knot in it. The wood wasn't giving me what I wanted. And it finally broke up, and then I decided it's time to make something else, so I made a smaller bowl. But it's a different shape, a different form, because you have to sort of leverage what you've got. And here, what I've got is this beautiful figure, and I wanted it to be that anywhere you were around the coffee table, you could look down and see the chatoyance of that. I don't know if you can quite see the reflection, but it's a really pretty figure. And I didn't want to close it up like the other form. So when you get a piece of wood, you have to kind of ask yourself, what can I do with it? What will the wood let me do to it? What is the right form for it? And that's what makes it exciting. And sometimes you get some really crazy things that can happen. And I'll give you one more example. So this is white oak. And in particular, it's a tree that just came down, so it was still wet. It hadn't dried out. And you know that if you put this on a lathe and make a bowl, as a wood turner, you know this, it's going to move. It's going to shrink and contort. And you have to be prepared for that. So the design was you had to make it a rim on it so it wouldn't bust. And as you can see, it's turned oval. And you had to make it extra thick on the bottom. And then you, you make it with those design things. It doesn't crack, which is actually a real joy. The next day, it's not broken in two pieces. And the, the actual grain pops inside because it's compressed. 
So this bull's not beautiful from a distance, but if you hold the bull, you really just, you feel like you know the tree it came from, because you can feel the grain inside, you can hear it, you can see the, the medullary rays coming up the sides. So this is why I love the, the, this material. It's, it's unforgiving, but it's also surprising and, and fun to work with. There are some other examples, I know I don't have a lot of time here, but here's an example where if I were making furniture, I'd throw away this piece of wood because it has sapwood on it, and the sapwood on oak turns white. But what I did instead was I made it a feature. I put it on the top, I reorganized it, and instead of making a bowl, it's kind of like a vase. And then I fumed it with ammonia to make it turn chocolate brown, but make the white sapwood turn even whiter. Um, so it's a, an example of like using a flaw to what a, a furniture maker would say in a piece of wood and turning it into a feature. And then there are just some examples. They're just gorgeous pieces of wood that you're lucky. You tear away through all the wood, and underneath is just something that's burl popping out. And so that's the one that gets really exciting. And then, I should say the other thing I like about wood turning is it's this constant interplay between what you want, what you're creatively thinking about, and what you can do. What the wood will let you do, what tools you have to make it happen. And so there's lots of, of challenges here. You can get as many challenges as you like, but I'll show you a couple of them and then end it there. Here's one. I wanted to put metal and wood together. Well, you, can't, you can actually pour molten metal on wood. It took me a while to figure out how to do it. But well, that was like a challenge. I, I had my notebook. I walk around the notebook sometimes, and I had pictures of this is what I want to do. And it took a while, and I talked to some engineers, and they helped me out, and I figured out how to do it. Um, and this one I have to share with you because I, I, I have a, a family full of engineers, and they're proud of this. So I wanted to turn this piece. It's jagged. When that goes around, it's like a saw blade, you're, and you're sticking your hand very close to the saw blade. And I wanted to see the cut as it was being made. But when it's spinning around, it's a blur. So. Um, let's see what it is quick here. Oops. There we go. What I did was I got a disco light from Amazon, a strobe light, and I wired it into the lathe. I hope this shows up well. And now it's still moving. You don't put your finger in there, but it freezes so you can actually see what you're doing and flip it on and off. Um, and it, it, that's, so these are the kinds of things that are fun. You know, figuring out something that no one really needed to invent and inventing it and getting the satisfaction that, yeah, I can do that now. And that's really what, what attracts me to wood turning. I'll leave you with one last picture, which is this one, I smile whenever I see it. It's not something that's particularly beautiful to anyone else, but I struggled for probably a year with pictures of that kind of shape, where I wanted to have the negative image of something that's turned, in this case, a base. But it's hard to do that, because you have a block of wood, you have to turn it on the inside without seeing it. And it took me a long time to figure out how to do it, and I went, had a lot of changes in the brief of what I wanted to do, and finally, after I think maybe a year of work, I figured out how to do it. Had a eureka moment, figured it out. And so this one always makes me smile. Um, it's, uh, it's kind of a culmination of both the creative side and the technique colliding together in a nice way. So thank you.